section about using Class Slide Pro in your classes. I'm going to show you um, how I use the tools that I showed you in creating the archive session that we viewed in the first um, phase that we went through. So when using Class Live, there's many tools available to you. And I'll go to my next slide here. And the first thing you want to do to get started is, is actually a good best practice to actually disable Class Live before the class session starts. And I have the why listed up for you here. But you don't want students hanging out for a while doing nothing while they're waiting for you to start the class. So I always start class about 10 minutes before. And I'll show you how to enable and disable that in, in, uh, in your uh, course shell. Have your PowerPoint ready to go for what you want to cover. And then, as I'll show you, you're going to enable Class Live about 10 minutes before class starts. When you enable it, it actually by default starts recording. So you want to pause that so those 10 minutes that you're waiting for students to come in don't record. And then you want to upload your PowerPoint while you're waiting for, the, for those students to join. And also, you also want to can turn the camera on and get the camera working and the microphone working while you're waiting for a class to start. And then when class starts, you click the recording on. And in my last session, the third session, I'm going to talk to you about, about what to do after you're all finished. So when we're ready to start, you just click on Lead Session. So here we are back in our course shell. And this, is again, is the course that it is ended. So I'm doing this as an example for you. And it'll just be me actually teaching it tonight. So you click Lead Session, click OK, and the Java will load for you. And again, we're going to get the same screen that we saw from the archive session will pop up. Only now we'll be leading the session, so I'll be able to show you the tools as, uh, as the session loads here. So again, here you see the participant list is on the left side. So you'll see uh, me as the instructor. In it tells you recording in progress, and you've been granted moderator privileges. So you click OK. And then you can see the little recording down here, so you just pause it as you wait for students to join. It tells you the recording is stopped. And so in the middle is the chat area that you saw. So you can type anything in there and it'll pop up on the screen and the students will be able to type in there as well. On the right is our whiteboard. So that's where we want to put our slides. And we can also type things in there, formulas, you know, anything we want to talk about you can type in here as well. So to load your PowerPoint, you click on Load a Presentation in the bottom left can uh, corner here. And usually you put it in after the current screen. You click OK. It'll look for the PowerPoint file. So here's my class four, class week four I, I loaded for you last time. So you click Open. And it'll load that PowerPoint file in for us. And that takes a few, mom a few moments to load. So this is what you want to do about five minutes before your actual class time starts. Get those PowerPoint slides in there. And you see also on the left here, we have the emoticon. So you can have students can give you applause or a down sign if they're feeling that they're confused. Um, they have the green arrow and red check mark for yes or no. Now our slides are in there. So you can see that's how I got my slides in there. And just like PowerPoint, you can shuffle through them. So the polling, you can actually go to Tools. And there are lots of things here you can do. But just polling, you can do multiple choice, A, B, C, D. And that's where they start to vote for you, as you saw in there. You go up to this little bar graph, and you can publish those out. So that can be published out for the students to see. And that's what you saw in my archive session. You turn the camera on by clicking on the little eye here, show the video window. And you can preview it by clicking there and say hi. Click Transmit, and the students will see it. Students like to see you and your reactions. So you have all these tools available on the whiteboard. And to do application sharing, you click on this thing that says Share Selected Applications, a little yellow triangle. And you can click on your Microsoft Office. Click OK. And then you get your Excel sheet. So on the Excel, you can type in your numbers. And now you have application sharing, just like I showed you in the second s in the uh, uh, first session that we went through. So these are all the tools that are available to you in Class Live. The students can see you. They can see your application. 
In the last session, I'm actually going to go back over some of the tools that we ran out of time for in the second phase, and I'm going to show you what to do at the end of your session to archive it. So briefly, last time I went through the polling tools, I kind of went through those kind of quickly. So there's lots of features you have in Class Live for polling. Again, under Tools, you click on Polling, and that's where you can change them to your ABCD, get your results, and so forth. And as you saw in the archive session that we went over, I was able to publish the, the poll. So once the students were giving it, you click on this little chart thing here. It says publish the polling statistics to the whiteboard and it'll publish that out and then you can move it around, get it out of your way if you're teaching. And you saw that's how I updated the poll when the students were, were voting on the different uh, questions that I asked them. You can lock the poll. You can only show it to moderators if you want, uh, not to show it to the students, and, and so forth. So the other tools that we use are the um, application sharing. So I wanted to show you that real quickly. So again, so again, it's this little yellow triangle. And as you drag over these things, it tells you what they are. So if you're teaching and you want to share those, let me just turn the recording back on again. Recording started. And what you do is you click on that, and it brings up this uh, little application. You can also share your entire desktop if you want your students to see what you're working on in your desktop or you can just kind of share the application. And that's what I did for you in that session. So when you share it, the screen kind of resets depending on what computer you're working on. It'll give you a little thing that says now sharing application, so you click OK. And then to get your window back, you simply go over to the left side. I don't know if you can see it here, but you basically click on the wide layout is what you want to get back to to give us this thing. This is our wide layout that we're on. And then when I'm working in Excel, now you can see it. You can type in here and whatever you type in will be captured and the students can see it. That's what I was doing in that session. And so you can show them any type of software that you like uh, that you want to use in your teaching, uh, teaching environment. And to stop that you just click on the stop sharing so up in the corner and then it'll stop sharing. It actually will tell you as well that you stop sharing. It goes back to the regular regular point there. So again these are all the tools that you're available to you in Class Live. So you can share applications, you can use the whiteboard which you can load PowerPoints into, you can take polls, you can chat with them in the chat zone. What's nice is when you're teaching if you have 15 or 20 students what I do is I turn the microphones off for the students and they don't have to have video either, but they can have video as well. But I turn those off for the students, and I just have them type in the text box. So they put in their questions down in the text box, and then I can see who's asked a question, and I respond to them as I'm teaching. And the students really like this. Although they want to see you, they don't necessarily want everybody to see them. So that works out really well. So once you're done, you say goodbye to the students, you wrap up, you pause the recording, it says recording stopped and then you can either kick the students out you can right click on them and kick them out of the room to make the recording end but actually it doesn't end until all the students leave so you can just click close it if you want to leave class say OK and once you leave class Computer. Identify, please. then it will send you back to the live screen and if you reset it, what will happen now is the session date will show and there's see there's today's date, August 10th, and it'll say untitled. And it'll say in progress because until everybody leaves and the uh, system actually resets, what it does is it'll archive that file. It'll make an archive file that'll have the video, the whiteboard, everything that was recorded just like in the session. And so you can just click on it and, and uh, give it a title. So this one we would just call Illuminate, hit Return, and it'll label it for you. Whoop. Because you have to hit, hit Save on there. So I gave weekly sessions like week 4 session, week 3 session. Click Illuminate, and then click on the Save button, little file button there, and it saves it there. So then students can go in once, it, once it's done, and here it's already done. You can click on it. And just like we saw in the first session, now you have a nice archive session that you can call from.